Greetings, family. Uh, this is Bomani Tamba, and uh, welcome to our Africa for the Africans uh, tour conference call for our schedule for 2024 and 2025. And today's date is March 17, 2024. So that means uh, we've completed an incredible year uh, last year, uh, four incredible journeys of a lifetime to the African continent, uh, getting us reconnected. And so, family, this is our 18th year doing Africa for the Africans tours. Uh, and um, my 20th year traveling to Africa. Uh, so it's been a long journey and we're putting the work into this bill of connection that's uh, been unbelievable. And even though that connection has been built, uh, we have a lot of work to do as far as um, making sure that we're settled on the African continent. Uh, anything, you know, tourism is uh, always fine, but as far as when we talk about investments and repatriation, that's on a whole different level. So. Enjoy your um you know, your journey of a lifetime, and if you're open to other things, uh, that's why we have business and investment conference in countries like Ghana and uh, Liberia, and other countries. We try to just make sure that we get you the best uh, information, but um, everything is based on roots and culture tours. Uh, so we're talking about one of the most um incredible, incredible historical and cultural uh, parts of the world, the African continent. So our journey is literally just take you around the African continent and just uh, get you connected. And from there, you know, we're always open to connecting with ind individuals uh, in reference to doing other things. Uh, but we always just let people know up front that um, for the most part, uh, tourism and living, doing business and investing in Africa is uh, two different uh, situations. Uh, so before you get into anything else, Outside of our tourism, definitely um, recommend that uh, you are fully clear and always recommend people make no quick decisions because uh, some of the most incredible countries that we're going to, uh, you know, ever since like the 2019 year return or even way before that, uh, people see you coming. Uh, so uh, try to keep us in the tourist district in certain places, but you do have vultures and scavengers all over the place. It's no different from this. You going anywhere. You're doing tourism, so you know you stand out. Yeah, uh, but that's the best way for us to you know reconnect to the African continent, enjoy some level of this getaway paradise, and things like that. And uh, you know we know that there's problems and issues on the African continent, but um, that is not uh, our sole re responsibility, or that's not our responsibility to tackle on and put a world on our shoulder. Um, you know, most of us are just come into this you know, have an open mind to enjoy a journey. So we make sure the journey is packed with uh, great resorts and uh, great itinerary and just a whole lot of social energy. And that is a direct introduction. And for the most part, sometimes we just need to stay in that direction. So I always wanted us to uh, clear it up because uh, we do have the big, bold um, investment right there after tours. And most of that investment is an investment in education to educate yourself about Africa and what you're getting into. So we're gonna be kicking things off uh, with our Liberia journey. And we did a conference call for our, uh, our group members and had my, our two hosts there. And they were just sharing the real life about Liberia. And as I see my good brother, Kala Genesis on, and just really just clearing up things that are not clear. And that's what we do on these journeys. And that's why it's so important that we document the journeys and always, checking with everyone to see if you're ever open to interviews or just um, giving us some feedback. That's always helpful, I, especially since we're just trying to share more of real experience and also trying to keep us more connected on African continent to where we can network and look out for each other because, you know, it's one of those things where people now see uh, us coming. And when people see you coming, uh, they're planning and plotting, not saying that everyone you're going to meet is, you know, is that situation. But then do you really want to just like, trust the situation in this you know so make sure you just um come with an open mind to enjoy the journey but uh make sure that you keep your eyes open and uh if you feel someone is consistently overcharging you and things like that or giving you a hard time or playing games with you uh that's what that's why myself as a tour organizer and a tour leader is there to assist you and also the tour hosts and the tour guides that we have uh so some countries are different where we have more staff and some we have less uh it just all depends uh for upcoming library, we are packed with a whole lot of people because when you first uh, make your way into an introduction of a country, uh, you want to make sure you bring your A-plus game. And uh, number one, you definitely don't want to have any regrets that you didn't do certain things and you didn't put enough time and effort and energy into it. And as I've, we've been talking about the library journey, it's been a magical journey because we basically had to just 
put the itinerary together from the ground up and just, you know, working with so many people and trying to make it, uh, you know, because when, you when you're taking things from one level to the next level, you just want to look at what you did in the past. And regardless if you've been there to the country or not, uh, you know, you put your best effort and energy. And I feel like we've done that to set this year off with that first journey of a lifetime to uh, Liberia and Morocco. And that's March 29th to April 9th coming up. So what I'm going to do is start off with uh, some screen sharing uh, of uh, the program itself. But before I continue, I want to introduce my good brother, uh, Kala Genesis, which is uh one of our hosts uh, for Liberia, a brother that has dedicated his, you know, the last ten plus years of his life to, you know, sharing Liberia information and uh, keeping Liberia uh, energy strong, and always trying to let our people know that uh, we do have a country in Africa that uh, us as or our ancestors from the African diaspora have built. So this is also just a, a proud journey that we're making to do uh, something that uh, we have not seen in a long time. Uh, so we're looking to just take it to another level and build our energy in Liberia. And, you know, definitely looking forward to what we can do between uh, along the coast of West Africa. That's more so where our journeys are. And that's the best, best place where I recommend that uh, we as a people think about repatriation and investing. I'm not saying that we can't do these things in East Africa or Southern Africa or North Africa, but this is the land. Th th these countries are, are the land of our ancestors and um, more prominent than anything else, uh, Liberia is that country. So uh, Kala Genesis has been great as far as educating us, as far as the history and the culture and the misunderstanding of Liberia. So Kala, I'm not sure if you have a good five, 10 minutes where you can just come on in and uh, give us a good introduction about Liberia before we continue with the tour program. Um, so whenever you're ready, brother, just unmute yourself. And uh, you, know, you can do some of the same introduction that you did when we did the uh, group meetup. All right, Carlos, the time is ticking now. Let me know if you're ready to unmute. If not, uh, we can do it uh, later on in the program. All right, as I'm waiting for Carla, um, I'm going to do a screen sharing of our last, our last newsletter. And uh, Carla, uh, once you're ready, just uh, come on in and I'll just uh, stop and then uh, you can just introduce yourself. And uh, all those great things uh, that you have shared with us in Liberia and then just tell people more, you know, while you see Liberia is one of the countries that are the future. And so this is our classic newsletter and I just update this uh, once a month and we just, you know, it's uh, packed with a whole lot of uh, group photos in these colorful Africa for the Africans uh, t-shirt. So our last uh, journey was South Africa Roots and Culture toward December 24th to January 4th. So that was just, uh, just recent, a few months ago. And then before that, we're in uh, Tanzania in uh, November and uh, Ghana in May, and uh, here in the Gambia, Senegal and the Gambia, uh, March, April. So that's our classic layout of our four, four tours throughout the year. And this uh, last year covered five countries, and the same as this year, four tours that we have that covered five countries. So that's literally the max uh, we can uh, do, and looking to reduce it more to three and space things out. Yeah, but uh, the more people show interest, the more we can do it. Uh, other than that, we just, we just make adjustments. Uh, so some groups are big, some groups are small. And it seems that it just uh, show usually like the last several or more um, uh, group photos. And uh, as you can see, we, all, we have all these colorful Africa for Africans t-shirts. So that's been one of our marketed energy to show, you know, the, the vibrant energy of our group and bring a level of solidarity. And these are the colors that represent the flag, the colors of the country, the colors that represent Pan-Africanism, nation building, and so on. All right, so the main thing that we all tell everyone, uh, the interest in traveling with us is to just make sure they look at all of the information on the uh, website. Um, I always have the information updated and you know, schedules as far as just usually just one to two years ahead of time. Uh, so once you're clear and you're committed, uh, that's one of the links uh, to make a commitment. That way we can calculate that uh, we're going to have a tour and we have people committed. Uh, and, and and so, you know, we did have Rwanda one time on the uh, schedule, but no commitment. So, you know, we had to move forward. Uh, not all these countries uh, that you have, you're going to, you know, you're going to have people want to commit to it. Uh, some people have different uh, interests. So that's why we have more people traveling to Ghana than anywhere else. It's a country that uh, this, have done great marketing and a country that have historical connections to where, uh, things are still vibrantly there in the country where it's a point of your return or point of your reconnection. And that's what we're looking to do with this uh, library, trying to find the things in the country 
that we can share with the rest of the world to bring more people and build more interest. And then you know, likewise, the same on the entire coast of West Africa. And I was talking about the uh, schedule. So that's our Liberia schedule uh, link uh, that takes you right to the uh, website. Uh, Ghana uh, is set for uh, 24 Journey of a Lifetime. That's July 11th to the 23rd. And we have this a nice flow of itinerary, four days around Accra, three in Cape Coast, Almania, and three there in Kumasi. And then while we're there, between Accra and uh, Cape Coast, Almina, we're going to visit our Black Star Pan-African community. And also in Accra, we have a vibrant uh, business and investment conference that we're look, looking to step oh, in. Um, right. Is someone... Hala, you ready? Yeah. Yes. Uh, is somebody else mute? All right, uh, go ahead, brother. So what I'm going to do is stop the screen sharing um, and uh, we'll continue with this. My good brother, Kala Genesis, uh, if you can just come on in since we're talking about uh, Liberia and that's the journey that we're getting ready to go to. If you can do that introduction and just tell us uh, why Liberia is so important and so on. And then uh, we'll see. Uh, uh, like yeah. everything else in Black America, right? And I'm not trying to sound disrespectful or... Uh... Like that. Even, and the black guess you can you can you can say those things and then uh, do your introduction after that. Okay, uh, okay. Yeah. My name is my Dwayne McCalla. I'm the host of Call Genesis. I have a radio show called the Call Nation Radio Show on Deville Radio, broadcast in 30, 130 countries around the world, largest online black radio station. You know, so I got one of the lead spots, uh, 11 p.m. Eastern time on DevilleRadio.com, formerly Gangsterville Radio. And so I got, so I've been there four years, you know, so I mean, you get my message out there. And I've been a student of African history for 30 years, 30 something plus years. <clears throat> I'm really particularly a student of Liberian history. And the reason why Liberia is so special to me, and I think it's so special to Black America is, is the fact that Black America, we've always been the people that uh, we champion everybody. We champion America, we champion uh, we, we, we championed the Japanese when they got hit by Hiroshima and Nagasaki. Uh, we, we basically were, were empathetic towards the Jews during the Holocaust. Uh, wherever there's people suffering around the world, Black America is always there. Lenny of uh, apartheid South Africa in the 1980s, we galvanized the United States to, uh, to impose sanctions on South Africa. That's the, that's who we are as a people, you know? So when we go to Africa, we're not thinking about ourselves as a, people you, uh, people and everything. We just think about how everybody could benefit and how we all have a kumbaya world and everything. That sounds good, but what we're finding out is that not everybody thinks like that. And what I'm saying is this uh, about Liberia is is there some place in Africa, uh, some place in the world that was basically created for us, that we can have something for ourselves. And it goes back to everything. The black man got to start learning, uh, appreciate his own accomplishments, right? Stop trying to be uh, something you're not in the world. You know, stop chasing other people's women. You know, stop chasing other people's culture, other people's stuff, and learn to love yourself and appreciate it because everybody else does. They put themselves first. And so what I'm saying is what Liberia is, when you look at Liberia, the first eight presidents came from uh, from the United States, Jamaica, Barbados, and everything, is, is basically has us in the Constitution. You look at the Constitution was written. It was written as a refuge for people seeking liberation. The whole thing about Black liberation was born in Liberia. The whole idea of, of Black nation, of people of, of many nations as one, living in a, a, a nation, it was Liberia. That was founded right there. The birthplace of Pan-Africanism was right there in Liberia. That's where it was actually practiced, where people of different uh, backgrounds and tribes and everything could live together in peace and harmony as black men. You know, so what I'm saying is, so so if you got a country that had the idea of the black struggle, the yoke of the black struggle on its back for hundreds of years, trying to show the world that we can have a nation of our own and stuff like that, you know, we have to do ourselves the uh, our responsibility and make that country uh, a, a special place for us does not mean you cannot go to all these other countries. It does not mean you can not partake, but understand something. <clears throat> God blesses the child that has his own. It's like you going out there, uh, 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 taking care of everybody else's house and everybody, and your own house is being neglected. Liberia is our house. 
and the black man in the diaspora and everything, something that diaspora created and built and whatnot, we've been neglecting that. Now, the other countries in, in Africa and whatnot, it's up to them to ultimately to do that because they're the ones that's going to benefit. And that's why people are having trouble in these other countries. You build and they want it back. Then you build and they, oh, I'm having all these troubles in the Gambia. I'm having some, well, all these countries, they're not going to let you shine on them. They, they, they didn't build that. They didn't create those countries for you. Now, if you want to do something, that's fine. But if it don't work out, don't complain. But here's one country that basically says this is where you could you could rent instead you could own instead of rent. You could have instead of uh being like an outsider. You know, you can feel like you're special, that you're a part of something. You know, that's why I always want to say about the reason why Liberia is so important. I think black people need that. Black people of America need that. As far and especially in these days and times, we don't really assure about the Pan-African movement anymore and everything like that. We de definitely need to show that we have a history in Africa uh, beyond just slavery. You know, we did return to Africa 200 years ago and we've been returning to Africa then. It also goes through the whole thing of the old black people who, were, who went to South Africa. People don't know about the black community, African-American community in South Africa that helped build modern South Africa. People don't know that history. Black people that went to Costa Rica, uh, Dominican Republic, you know, uh, Haiti, you know, Panama, you know, Mexico, uh, Canada, you know, France, Russia. So we don't know these stories and everything like that. We don't know these stories. Hold on. All right, where's some food? You know, give me one second. I'll be right back. All right, absolutely, Carla. Uh, appreciate it. Uh, so, family, that is Carla Genesis, uh, one of our hosts and the person that uh, literally this. Uh, encourage us to uh, come to Liberia. And that is one of the main reasons why we're coming to uh, Liberia. Uh, and you heard his presentation and he's going to come back, back and uh, continue. But while we, before we uh, continue, I got uh, our other host, uh, Sister Waini Ahmed, uh, that uh, has been our tour operator. So she's uh, coming with us to Liberia also. And she has our crew, our staff and people in place. So we're working together to this pull off an incredible journey. So Wayne, if you have a minute and, um, or if you have uh, several minutes, and if you want to uh, just unmute yourself and come in and talk about Liberia and uh, what to expect, what to experience, and also just give us some advice on how to move and things like that, and then talk about your, your history and your connection with Liberia. All right, so Wayne, when you're ready, just unmute yourself. And while I'm waiting for we need Hello, to... Hello, sorry. I was trying to walk somewhere a little bit quiet. <laughs> All right, excellent. Yes. Yeah, okay. So for those who don't know me, my name is Winnie Wonder. Um, I run the Liberian Heritage Society, which is an organization that started in 2020 to preserve and promote Liberian historical Hello. heritage. Oh. Okay, I'm coming. Sorry. <laughs> Your background is loud, but uh, if you want to do it another time um, in the show, yeah, that's it's kind of it's kind of busy here. I'm so sorry, you guys. I'm at work right now. I kind of thought I was going to get like a little fifteen minute, but not quite. Um, yeah, I started the organization um to preserve and promote Liberian historical heritage because a lot of the times in the media, Liberia, we don't we are not shown for who and what we really are. So that was one of the main factors of me creating the organization. And through that organization, we formulated Kakaleka Travel and Tours, which is a tour group. And we do historical tours and we do also amusement tours. So when Kala and Bomani reached out to me, I thought this was a great opportunity to create something special for this tour that we have planned in the next couple of weeks. <laughs> so yeah, what you guys can expect uh, you'll get a little bit of history, but we'll also have a lot of leisure. <laughs> Liberians, what we call leisure, we call we call leisure and colloquia. Colloquia is uh, basically uh, Liberian colloquial. In America, it's called colloquial English that you hear in, you know, or like uh, you hear in many Southern um, dialects. But, you know, through time in Liberia, we call it colloquia. <laughs> so when you go to Liberia, if you listen keenly, you will hear like a southern draw. Um, 
the way we speak our colloquial is with a southern draw mixed with a some may say like a Trini tune, Trinidadian tune, mixed with a, of course, indigenous, uh, indigenous African accent. So that's why a lot of times, uh, Liberians, when we talk, we're very distinctive. You can hear us, you can know us from a mile away, but we have certain similarities in words that we use with um, those that's from the southern part of the United States and those that are from certain parts of the Caribbean and in West Africa as well. Just to give you a brief history. <laughs> Absolutely, Wayne, and uh, you can also continue and share as much as you want. Um, someone just uh, text a message, is this call for mm -hmm. Latin Ghana? Uh, this call that we have, the email that was sent out is an uh, email for um conference uh, call for Africa tours that includes uh, all the countries that we're traveling to this year mainly. And then uh, we may be able to still talk about Brazil, which we have for next year. Uh, but uh, oh, nice. and uh, all information that we talk about for all the tours, I'm just answering your question, mm -hmm. is, 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 is in reference to all countries because everything that, uh, even the preparation information, outside of what uh, Colin Wayne is talking about, but uh, the general preparation information is relevant. But uh, on this call, we, you know, we'll just bounce around and talk about certain countries. But for the most part, the goal is to talk about the countries that we have coming up. So we will be talking okay. about Ghana, and uh, when nothing is in um, in full details, so that's one of the things. But more, many things that the main thing that I always want to talk with everyone about is just being able to just take their time and look at the tour details and the tour information because unfortunately. When you talk to the majority of people that travel with you, uh, you find out that they didn't read the itinerary and didn't read some of the information, which is unbelievable because it's a lot of money and it's a lot of accountability. So uh, I always want to talk about the uh, website. So let me get back to the newsletter. But Wayne, if you want to share some more things, uh, let me know. And um, and I can go back and forth from the newsletter to you know, yourself sharing information. Okay, well... Do anybody have any questions about what to expect? Okay, you said that somebody sent a message. No, the message was, is this call about Liberia or Ghana? And the answer is, uh, it's about both countries and the rest of the schedule. And it's also about general preparation information. So I'm just answering your question. Uh, okay. And, and then uh -huh. uh, one of the things is, uh, everyone that's listening, whenever we do tours, uh, we, we have private tours. Like uh, we just did a, a library private uh, conference call a few days ago. And uh, that, that was introduction with a group of members and so on. And as time go along, uh, especially if I have more people ready to travel, we can always do them earlier. Um, but um, the most part, for the most part, we just cover the information that's on the website and uh, things that you may have overlooked. Uh, so that's another thing I'm going to go over is the Liberia uh, tour preparation, which is an in detail list I, I put together. And uh, that list is also the same similar 30 points that's on all the other tours. So that's want to make sure that you know because we have people that's traveling to different countries, uh, but definitely since we you know we're traveling to Liberia, we definitely want to make uh, take as much uh, time and opportunity to to share a lot of the things about Liberia, like some of the things that you and I have talked about, Wayne. Um, if you can, because some people that are some of our members that are traveling with us have been to different countries, uh, so uh, you know you 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 can't stop it from this literally just comparing the countries that you've been to. So. You're gonna have people compare certain things to Liberia, especially since most of the people think the common country that they have traveled to is uh, Ghana that, that's coming with us to Liberia. So I, I want to know if you can share the difference with us um, in uh, Ghana and Liberia, uh, the history and culture, and and okay, also well, and also uh -huh. what to expect in the country because uh, some people may think it's the same development and the same energy and the same things. Uh, so if you can also share that. Okay, uh, Liberia and Ghana have a lot, uh, like a, a long history. If that's what I should say, we have we have a lot of connections, Liberia and Ghana, but we're two different nations with two different cultures. Um, let me say that uh, we're very intertwined. Uh, certain aspects of Liberian history would not be there without. Uh, Ghana and certain aspects of Ghanaian history definitely will not be there without Liberia. Liberia is actually 
the country that started the Pan African movement, but we never we never get the recognition for that. And like I said, that was some of the reasons why I decided to come out with Liberian Heritage Society because a lot of our history, I don't know if it's uh, purposely forgotten or it's just that's just the way it is. The actual, uh, the first president, Kwame Nkrumah of Ghana, is actually a librarian. That's why I say you cannot have Ghanaian history without talking about uh, librarian history. And that's something I don't get talked about a lot. But when you ask uh, historians in Ghana, they will say, yes, they will admit to it. If they're a real historian, like Kwame Nkrumah is actually a true man from Liberia. And in those days of the Gold Coast, even my mom was born in Ghana, but her parents are Liberian. Um, in those days, the British used to use people from my tribe, which is the Kru tribe. We are natural, uh, we're seafarers um, by profession. You know, every tribe has something that they're unique and good and still in. And the Kru people were very good when it comes to navig navigating the seas. So the British used to use us during the Gold Coast. But our behavior was much more different than the local tribes and down. And when it came to education, we were educated first. But because we also had our Liberian background, there's certain things that just made us so independent that the locals saw an envy in us. Not envy in a bad way. I should, see, I should use the word admire in us. So that's why I say you cannot have Ghanaian history without mentioning Liberia. And you cannot have Liberian history without mentioning Ghanaian history because just the way, that, uh, just like uh, the way the crew people were seafarers by profession, the fancy people were also good at uh, uh, fishing. So when you go to Liberia along the coast, you see a lot of uh, towns or villages called fancy towns. And Fanti is a tribe in Ghana. So when you go to like around the coastal areas, you go to Grand Cape Mount County, you go to Grand Cape County, even Montserrat County, you will see Fanti Town. So our history is intertwined, but we're two different nations based on colonialism. When it comes to Ghana, of course, Ghana will be more developed. Ghana has always been more developed because the British uh, developed Ghana or the Gold Coast, rather. And when the British uh, developed the Gold Coast, unlike other West African countries, like the way the French did to Guinea, they did not destroy Ghana when they were leaving. Because if they were going to destroy Ghana, the whole world was looking, was watching. Because as you can remember, Ghana was the first independent or first country to gain independence. So it was like a worldwide event in 1959 when Kwame Nkrumah became president. So for the British to destroy what they built in Ghana, it was going to be seen all over the world, if you uh, understand what I mean. Because the Portuguese did that in Angola, the Portuguese did that in Mozambique, the French did that in Guinea, they did that in Niger, they did that in Mali. When they left those countries, they destroyed it. So Ghana will always, I won't say will always be, but Ghana is way ahead of Liberia in terms of development. So yeah, we're two different countries. But like I said before, you cannot mention Liberian history without mentioning Ghana or Ghanaian history. And the same is vice versa. I appreciate you, Wayne. That um, always great for, uh, for you to share all the exciting, clear information about uh, Liberia. And this is one of the things where uh, we have to tell our stories and we have to share with the world uh, as far as our experience, our connection in, in Africa. And so family, when you see us moving, it's a team of us. And you know, we help this, uh, you know, get each other clear on certain information that way we can uh, present together uh, on, a, you know, on a united front. And you know, it's all about uh, Africa for the Africans connection. Now, my good brother, Kala Genesis, um, let me know if you want to finish up or if you want to also add to anything that Winnie have to say. And then uh, once uh, both of them are finished, if anyone have any questions for them, uh, you can ask the questions right now or you can wait towards uh, the middle or the end of the um, conference. But uh, go ahead, Kala. Yeah, like she was saying, <laughs> bottom, line, bottom line, the British, the Gold Coast was a British crown colony. Crown colony is like, 
one of the number one positions in the in the Commonwealth. And these countries make the mistake are still part of the British Commonwealth. You know, there's still a crown for every every African country has a crown on the Queen's hand. <clears throat> and so therefore, they're gonna somewhat benefit, right? They're not gonna prosper. You know, you like you say, you say you'll get a good earn a good living, but you never get rich. That's something, right? They're saying you'll do a good deed, but you'll never get rich. That's how Africa is right now. They're you have, they they jockeying for who's the number one crown uh, uh, in the, the royal crown, whether it's Nigeria, whether it's Ghana, whether it's Kenya, whether it's uh, South Africa, or Botswana, or Namibia. Uh, Zimbabwe, Zambia. <coughs> Excuse me. All these countries are part of the British crown. And so, therefore, of course, they're going to have access to more resources and stuff like that uh, to develop it. So like, that's just a given. You know, now the only thing Liberia really traditionally had was the diaspora, the black diaspora. That's what made Liberia what it is, right? That's what built Liberia. Is connected to our institutions in America. Also, all the Liberian heads of state and top people were educated at HBCUs were influenced by black churches, black politicians, the civil rights movement, the black power movement. We had Garveyites. You know, that's what made Liberia what it was, you know, nothing else. Of course, people argue that, that uh, Liberia did have uh, 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 help from Germany and the Netherlands. In Spain and countries like that, yeah, they did that, but they were never, Liberia was never colonized, you know. So, so some people think Liberia's a case of, and some Liberians envy the fact that um, that uh, they it's like a uh, a free person envying the the shiny chains of on a slave. Think about that. A free person envying that because the free person got it hard and you're looking on a plantation. Well, I wish I was there. At least I get fed. You're envying the chains of a slave. And that's how some people <coughs> view Liberia. Man, if we could only have been colonized. Well, the big thing is all these countries are dealing with the effects of colonization. As you see with Burkina Faso, uh, Niger, and all these countries that are fighting the France right now. And these bloody upheavals and everything, and said, "Why is this happening? Because they're basically trying to overthrow the yoke of the French and everything like that. In other words, they're trying to get rid of those chains. Whereas Liberia does not have to do that. It's already been a free country, you know. So that's things you have to look at. You know, when you go, when you embrace the country, you're embracing not just that. You're now a British subject. You're now a French subject. You know, I don't. I, I'm not going all the way to Africa to be." Uh, to play the Chelsea games and play uh, host of the Queen of England and all this kind of stupid shit like that. You saw all those heads of state crammed on a coach bus to go to the Queen's funeral. You better, they better had their black asses there. You know? Yeah, so I also want to remind you, you're in a professional business call. Oh, yeah, sorry, sorry. Yeah, 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 sorry, sorry. Presenting in front of so, so you better have your black behinds there, you know? You know? Uh, the bottom line is, you know, uh, that's what it is. You know, the Queen of England's there, and you're uh, a British subject. And you know, think about it. Can you imagine if somebody says uh, that they're going to take a whole chunk of like the state of the United States and just suck oil out and give the United States government a pittance for it? And yeah, you too scared to take, or take that would never happen. But that's what the Queen, the the England, the British have. The British control all the oil that comes out of Nigeria and gives them nickels and dimes for it. Because they can. That's what you that's what you're subjected to. You know, I me personally, man, I'm just my pride. I don't want any part of that. You know, if I if uh, uh, especially if you know the history, it was the black man in America who saved France and England during World War One. <clears throat> Without the Harlem Hell fighters, France would have fell to Germany. The French, the French, the French are no match for us in any kind of way. The French were one a brilliant. Uh, 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 the French were brilliant as far as like science and invention and stuff like that in the 17th, 18th, 
19th century, but the, the modern age, you know, they weren't really all that great. You know, they weren't really all that great. But the whole thing is, you know, people flock to that culture, like that culture is so something behold, I'm French and everything. What's so special about French culture? Black America, we like you just another, you know, we're, we're your peers. So the go go and say we're gonna live under a people that we consider inferior, the French and the British, you know, it's not like, you know, you know, live. but to Africa, these are their their rulers, the French, the British, the Portuguese. You know, you know, all whatever, you know, we don't see things like that from what we just, that's that American in us. You know, so that's what I want to say about that. So like I said, that vantage point of what I'm saying is like when you go to Africa and whatnot, you know, wh who are you, uh, who are you with? Now you're basically in the Commonwealth of South Africa. And I'm not knocking all these AL countries, but when you're in the British Commonwealth and everything, you're now part of, if you really want to integrate into these societies, you're now part of not just South Africa side, the Ghanaian side, the Nigerian side, the Kenyan side. You're now part of the British Wealth Commonwealth, the, the Commonwealth of Nations. You can't say I'm a Kenyan, Black Power, whatnot. And the Kenya is a member of the British Commonwealth. You know they're loyal to the crown of the King of King Queen of England. You know, so all the stuff you gotta look at. Same thing with the French. You know. I like to go, I want to be someplace where I don't have to worry about that. You know, I don't, you know, there's no history of colonialism and stuff like that, you know. So that's that's just that's just a plus for me. You know. That's just a plus for me. Not yeah, have to worry. Yes, yes, I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate it. So but uh let's uh keep it moving. So family, um uh, a, a great analysis and breakdown from Carla Genesis about uh countries in Africa and um explaining uh difference um between Liberia and other countries. So appreciate you doing the same also, Wayne. Does anyone have any questions for Carla or Wayne? And I'm just gonna go through a few more of the schedule and then go to the preparation list. So if you don't have a question right now, you can wait towards uh, that time. And I want to say this to Bomani, right? We should all get on knees and thank the Portuguese, right? You know, for colonizing, being the most backward country in Europe, like Samori McCall said, the most backward country in Europe, right? And, and, and that made a quick work of basically getting the independence. The Portuguese, the former Portuguese countries in Africa are free because they didn't have the, really the influence that the other European countries had. And they uprooted the Portuguese out of Guinea-Bissau, uh, Angola, and Mozambique. So uh, uh, Samora McCall said, thank God we were colonized by the most backward country in Europe because we'd still be enslaved if we were colonized by the British and the French. So Angola is another free country right there, you know, the Portuguese Africa. <clears throat> Excuse me, oh, folks. So yeah, so that that so Portuguese Africa is another place that people look at should look at. You know, Portuguese Africa, because they're starting off with a clean slate. There's no loyalty to the Portuguese king or whatever like that because they were overthrown. Portugal had a civil war, a coup d'état. You know, the wars in Angola and Africa caused a coup d'état in Portugal in 1975. So all that territory is now free. It's like, boom, it's just like that. That's why Angola can make moves right now. It doesn't have to worry about talking to us former Portuguese masters. Portuguese don't, Portugal don't own, uh, don't own a whole bunch of swap of thing of Mozambique and everything. So that's another two countries. I'm just trying to get people to open up and understand geopolitics. Absolutely. That's my Absolutely. geopolitics. But you know the reality of it is, um, you know, the countries who present the best, uh, that's where people are gonna go to. Like uh, you and I was having a conversation about Kenya, which uh, I'm working on trying to trying to get that schedule of uh, Kenya and um, Ethiopia. Just gotta get to it. But uh, we you know we're talking about that, and you know they're presenting themselves and they're attracting people towards that direction. The same thing as uh, Tanzania, we, we just came from a few months ago. So. Um, I appreciate energy in Liberia, you know, and Ethiopia is another good country. That's well, another good, good country. Well, the good thing is, you know, we're going to Liberia so we can, you know, we can build the marketing of it, uh, the videos and so on that we talked about earlier. Same thing of 
we talk about Wayne and things like that. Uh, but uh, but that's what's going on. Um, you know, so if uh, Liberia can make a better presentation as far as welcoming African from the diaspora, uh, then the business is going to go in that direction. You know, you and I talk about yeah. the, the troubles that goes on in Ghana, uh, Tanzania, the Gambia. You know, countries where I have people at where I've influenced or have taken people to, to uh, those countries, and then they have situations where you know when you and I talk about these things, it's only for the purpose of us coming up with solutions and us creating opportunities and options for people. Uh, because, you know, once you start, once you get out here and you, you, you get yourself involved in this world, you know, you know, you have to, you know, you have to be also responsible for helping people and looking out for people. So we want to make sure we have the best presentation for Liberia and to make sure that anyone who have any interest, whether it's people that are traveling with us or people that they see the videos, you know, they're in, they're in good hands. So one of the things our family, um, uh, we have this incredible, uh, and it's April 5th, incredible Liberia repatriation investment business conference banquet, all that good stuff. It's actually four hours long. So we're going to look at that model and see how that works. Um, and, uh, you know, even looking to change what we do in Ghana and just maybe adjust it a little bit more. So, you know, all of this is experience for us in Africa on, you know, figuring things out, how to make moves, how to get things done. Uh, so that's what myself and Kala talk about. And also, Wayne, we've been talking about these things a lot. And um, I've shared with Carla my whole 20 years experience on traveling on the African continent uh, for the sole purpose of for us to come up with a better game plan for Liberia. Liberia is in a better situation because now we have experienced all the different countries and, you know, people are similar in some ways and also different in, you know, in ways of culture and things like that. Uh, but, you know, uh, all these uh, clarity of the things. And also when we look at videos that, you know, the drama queens and kings put out on YouTube about people who are having hardship and bad times in Africa, you know, it's like they just enjoy broadcasting people's business and shaming them. But uh, everything that uh, I'm always talking about is for educational purpose. You know, it's kind of like when we got into this movement, there were you no know, educational information, uh, uh, repatriation, and, you know, really just building that connection that we want because what we previously saw was more of this Roots and Culture tour that was just by scholars. And, uh, you know, scholars are not always builders and things like that, but we're builders, we're the organizers, we're the people that together, when you look at our connection, we can deliver something incredible. And then naturally we can't do it without people and we can't do it without having people show up and, and come to the country. So tying all of that in family, you know, this is why we do this business and things because it's... Uh, it's a it's a portal, it's a direct connection that we have to keep going. So with Liberia now, I got one of my best brothers, college oh. and an expert on Liberia. And we've been talking about this thing. <laughs> we've been going at it for uh, two years and we've done a lot of live videos as far as Liberia and this. And I know people like, why Liberia? You know, why we just put on this time and energy? And, it, and it's because the goal is always to just look at your best options for repatriation and put time into it. Like Ghana is one of those countries that have worked out for some people and it's worked out in general, but uh, what you have learned is that, you know, a lot of times we make bad decisions and I'm not trying to just like throw people under the bus and things like that, but we do have business conference where people completely neglect everything that we talk about and what not to do and they do it and then they expect us to be damage control experts. So that put a burden on us because it's going to always affect our reputation regardless how it's looked at and things like that. Because people are like, well, these are several of your people they've been victimized, but then you look at the several of the people, they made some bad decisions. And at the same time, too, I'm not blaming the victims. It's like you want to like come up with solutions to figure things out. So part of traveling to Africa is learning, experiencing, and being able to, you know what I mean, which is the most difficult part, connect and understand your own people and not be a person that's, that's you know, that's you feel like you're walking around with a, you know, a sign that's a bank on your face. Like people can just come up to you and just... Uh, so th those are some of the struggles, uh, but uh, that's why we kind of moved the way we moved because... You know, we don't want people that's coming to experience certain things about Africa, which is inevitable because, you know, once you're outside of the world of tourism, it's, you know, it's, 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 a, you know, it's, you know, it's like what, what, you know, whether it's Shark Tank or this vultures are waiting for you. And that's what it is. Um, and it's a situation that, you know, that we can't deny as a people. And it's a situation when I'm talking with my good brother, Kala, it's like, okay, Let's make sure we have all the right things in place. And, you know, we have to keep, you know, watch our, you know, this this is your investments in your future. A lot of us are giving up a lot of what we have in America to make moves in Africa. So when people are coming, we don't want people to side talk them. Um, you know, as I've been talk, talking to Kyle about that, don't, don't be trying to let any of your folks side you know, 
talk with us, some of our folks and next, you know, he's telling the person that, uh, you know, I'm the, the, you know, I'm the son of the king and we, we can get you this land and you can build beach resorts all over the place. And all that stuff always sound good. But those are the things that uh, end up just, you know, working against what we're trying to do. So we always tell you ultimately in general, no matter whatever country you travel with me, I always have people I trust, which are usually the people around the tour operation that we do uh, because they have a whole lot to lose. Uh, so uh, anything that you need to do, you have to run it by them just per protocol to this. This, You know, I I get tired of the bad news. It's like, I don't want any more bad news. It's like, you know, so, you know it's like I, I want people to call me and say, yeah, I moved to Africa and I'm doing well. And it's been the greatest thing after the honeymoon session, though. Don't call me in uh, two, three months when you're just chilling and enjoying it. You know, call me about a year later. You know, that, that's what you want. And so uh, we want to cut back all of those things as far as, you know, because when you when you get to a country, it's undeniable. What you see from who you are as a person um, coming from the African diaspora, you see great opportunities. Like I saw great opportunities to build our community, Black Star, Pan-African community. And that's still the greatest thing I ever just made a commitment to. Very scary, very difficult, very challenging and very just demanding. Uh, but, you know, we have we run technology business, all kind of different uh, aspects of business and technology support. And I just saw the headquarters of what, you know, I wanted to do in the, you know, to where you have all your space and where you have young generation of people that can you know, take advantage of this opportunity. To, and then you, you're building your own corporation together uh, to where it's going to benefit, you know, us, our children, the future of Africa. And that's what I saw there. And I've not seen that anywhere else where I can do that, you know, where I'm at, um, this, this camp picture, this doing that or how that will work. But that's the beautiful thing about being in Africa. This, you, you, you're able to dream again. You're able to just like realize that, you know, you know, what have I been doing in, in, in America, you know, to, you know, but at the same time too, it's not easy to figure out, but, you know, but it benefits us to do group movements and work together as a unit. And that's the main thing I want to share with everyone. And uh, as I proceed to our Ghana Repatriation Investment Tour, uh, which is um, coming up uh, July 11th to the 23rd, our 24th journey to Ghana. Uh, so from 2006, December to now, it's been an uh, incredible journey. And uh, as far as tourism, it's you know, one of the best countries we have for tourism. And part of the, the re reconnection is unfortunate because it deals with the, you know, our stolen African ancestors, but they do have the presentation. So it's something that, uh, again, it's for educational purpose. So you're learning and you're just, you know, connecting, but it's not the end game of anything. I don't want people just to just be stuck in that direction. Uh, the, you know, it's part of this. If you want to do certain things in the country, you definitely want to just get a scope of the country and, and, get, and get a good feel. And this is a great way to do it. And also, it's a way to to pay homage to our ancestors, and you know, so that's what makes it uh, also special. And then we talk about repatriation. You know, you have a, yeah, you have the highest percentage of Black people from African diaspora living in Ghana, um, and so it's a place where you find. Um, you know, I talk about some of the bad uh, stories, which you know goes on, but you have a great level of success there in the countries, and it's mainly from people who have planned well for themselves, and I got to give it to them, um, and. That's a reflection of our planning and our organizing. Uh, it's based on how you know we organize our move. That's going to be based on our success there. So some of us who are coming feel like you're running away from I don't know what you're running away from, but you're running away and you're running into something that's going to just you know, take you in a different direction. Uh, so, and it's one of those things where you know you just uh, you want to let people know you know you're, you're not running from anything in America. You're coming to this uh, be a part of the future of Africa and be a part of what we as a people need to do. Uh, you're not running because anybody's chasing you, anybody doing anything because, you know, uh, I tell people I live a quality of life in America and I enjoy it and I enjoy my business and being able to do the things we do. But it's like you have learned all level of trade skills, business, and you, you know, you want to be able to expand that future to your future and your generation and be able to just, you know, you know, build an energy of a town that you can just enjoy to a high level to where you can just compete on another level. So it's just uh, something on another level for people to be open to. So that's why we talk about these business and investment conference and make sure that we have uh, from people that are going to be working in the Lands Commission or experts. Usually we have retired people from the Lands Commission who just goes through all the things about land and what to do. And then people still end up doing things that they tell them not to do. I would never get that, but... I'm not here to blame the victim, but we're here to help uh, people. 
uh, and a corporate attorney or you know business attorney. I always like, like to have uh, people like that presented, and also any diplomats or people who are repatriated, or you know people that's going back and forth. So that's what we talk about when we talk about business and investment conference. It's uh, and then you may have a few people do presentation on certain things, but uh, we limit a bunch of people that's presenting their business. You know, you can market your business, present their business as, oh, well, we have 50,000 acres of land over here and things like that. It's kind of limit those things. Uh, but I uh, definitely want to make sure that we get the right information to everyone when we do these uh, journeys. So that's uh, basically the foundation of our Liberia and our Ghana journey. Uh, literally just getting more of us into being clear about how to run business. And once we figure certain things out, we'd love for us to just build an incredible energy along that coast. You know, me and Carla even talk about the energy of cruise ships and vacations and getaway, um, you know, the 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 beautiful coast of West Africa is just incredible. If uh, that was uh, Jamaica or somewhere in the Caribbean, it would be all taken up by rich uh, uh, business investors uh, around the world because that's what the Caribbean represent. The richest uh, business investors that own, you name the resort, probably like the top 100, they're all in the islands. Uh, so... That's kind of what we have to do. We have to beat uh, uh, certain people to the punch because eventually they, you know, these things uh, inevitably happen because as the world is co go on, it's just less uh, incredible uh, land space and West Africa have it all. So uh, trying to encourage more of our people to just be open to traveling, connecting, processing, introducing what's going on to their friends, their associates, uh, people who have connections with business corporations that want to expand their, expand their black owned ent enterprise or empire to West Africa. Uh, so me and Kala got a whole lot of work to do. Me, Kala, Wayne, and the rest of us got a whole lot of work to do to this really uh, get things going in the different countries. And I'm hoping that we can be an influence to this, uh, get it going. Uh, so that's uh, Ghana and Liberia. And from there on family, we are uh, heading to uh, Egypt uh, for our Roots and Culture journey November 21st to December 2nd. Uh, so this is the link, and um, I, have the, um, I have everyone looking at the link because uh, all of these are the same link once you're on the website, uh, and you just click on the link and talk about the website. You know, Just like that, you're over on the website, and um, these are the same links that you have right here. And uh, once you click on them, give you all of the tour information, and you can just process uh, the details. The most important thing to always look at is a tour overview, itinerary, general terms, possible visa information there in preparation. So basically all of the information that's on there, uh, our goal is only to put uh, relative details on the uh, schedule. Uh, so that is gonna be um, you know, my first uh, journey back to uh, Egypt uh, since we initially went uh, in April of 2020, to, uh, 20, 2020, I'm looking at the dates, it's literally 2020, so it's 20 years ago. Uh, and before that I was in Senegal, March, of uh, 2004, so that was the initial journey. But those are two journeys that I've recorded these long documentaries on and things like that. Um, Egypt was six hours and um, uh, Senegal was uh, about four hours. I uh, still have it, it's on the VHS tape, which I converted to DVD and uh, later on converted the Egypt one to you know, uh, digital files, which I uploaded to YouTube. So that's what we do, advanced technology. You can just literally just make those things work. I don't have a whole lot of old footage because you know, since we have all this new modern day technology, the, the goal is always just to go back to the country and then shoot in the highest level of, of just beautiful recording. Uh, just like when you see the South Africa pictures, uh, you see the other ones, it's it's hurtful because you know that's the technology you have now, but you didn't have that technology in 2006 uh, and so on. But it does, you know, I love the brightness and the color and the beautiful energy. So Egypt was one of the countries that we're going to hit all of the, the flow from the Nile Valley civilization. So we're going to be starting off in Cairo. Then, you know, you have Luxor. Then you have uh, Aswan, Abu Simbo. And then you have also uh, Urgata by the Red Sea. And that's um, kind of a, a resort with a water park. And uh, the good thing about Egypt, it's just, it's just a five-star, just um, excellent as far as this tour operation and um I usually don't have, it, have to worry about anything. So if we do get a whole lot of people, they have bigger buses. Uh, so that's one thing I love about this you know, countries like uh, Egypt and South Africa. You know, you just want other countries to step their game up when it comes to tourism because, you know, you need the different variation of buses. You need baggage carts and things like that. And you need to be able, you know, because, you know, but you, in some countries you're rough with, like I'm sure 
we have to work it out in Liberia. We have to where we have to have another vehicle for luggage because you know you know those of us that be traveling, we know we, you know it's it's hard to just deny just bringing two fifty pound of luggage and then you have your your backpack and your carry on, and um, you know it's 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 standard. But uh, when it's time to just add that up to you know get moved around from airport pickup and drop off and things like that, you either have to have baggage cart or put the bags on the bus or. The ideal thing I love is just have a bigger coach bus, which is to go for every journey we have and put, you know, be able to just load up bags quick and easy. Or in South Africa, just have a nice baggage cart where all the bags just fit in the back of the cart. So these are the logistic operations that we learn. And then we also share with different countries so we can all step our game up on a high level and then build more black uh, tourism. Uh, so Egypt, uh, one of the best things about Egypt also is that now Valley Cruise. So you're literally going to be cruising you know, from uh, Luxor to Aswan or Aswan to Luxor. Sometimes I lose direction, uh, but uh, that's where the, the cruises go uh, back and forth. And it's a popular thing and it's a you know sightseeing. And these are not like the um, Royal Caribbean cruise ships, you know, which it was, but uh, they're more just uh, smaller vessels, uh, but they do have pools and they do have, you know, you know it's you know it's still a, a nice floating city, but it's uh, nothing like uh, your tropical, beautiful Caribbean cruise when you get on those massive ships and that I've like, 14, 18 stories. And Kala and Wendy, that got to be the future, of, you know, what we do in West Africa. Yeah. All right, and uh, South Africa. Uh, just got back from South Africa. Another incredible journey of a lifetime there. And uh, it's uh, Johannesburg uh, for five days and uh, Cape Town for four days. So we added added up, you know, or you know, stepped it up a little bit from uh, 2019. So this was another incredible journey. Got lots of videos right now on the YouTube channel on our safari in Planisburg. So it's, um, I'm still watching some of them also because when you're shooting these videos, you're just so excited that you're, you're, you're literally on recording. And if you stop recording, then you're back recording another segment of videos. So um, not sure how I figured it out, but I end up this, the, the segments end up just being perfect to where you know, they're uploaded, got a few more left. And then I'll upload some of these uh, conference calls that we did. Uh, but then definitely just, always encouraging people to be open to the experience and everything. Uh, but that was like one of the best part of the journey, just because, you know, we were, you know, I thought the drive was a little quicker, but we drove literally two hours from Johannesburg out to Pilanesburg. But the good thing about it, uh, you know, we were up bright and early and, you know, it was no, no us going back to sleep. So we saw all of this incredible infrastructure, this beautiful, this roads, um, you know, right to Pilanesburg. And then we saw this, this incredible nature of this beauty. Uh, so, you know, it's uh, amazing. That's why when uh, you're writing an itinerary, the goal is to just give you more of that itinerary, not to like keep you into some village or keep you in the, the, the city itself. It's a little bit, when you look at the itinerary, look at the place we're going, uh, especially like if you're talking about South Africa and um, uh, Tanzania, you just, you're flying from one place to the next and you're driving certain other places. Uh, so based on land, air, sea movement, uh, you know, we get you there and get you around logistically smooth. And is it simple to plan these? Absolutely not. But once you have a sequence and you understand planning and organizing, and it's like 20 years of your life plus the previous years of this experiencing countries and you know going to different uh, places, whether working with the airlines or just overseas uh, in the U.S. Navy, you know, it's a, just become part of your consciousness. And the, the most important thing is to make sure people have the greatest time and they're safe and secured and they're, you know, literally just um, in a situation where they just want to share more information and get us open up. So that's our primary focus is the African continent. I know people try and tell me to go here and go there. And, you know, and if, you know, you have a bunch of people say, let's, uh, you know, do, you know, do something all along Jamaica or the Caribbean. It's, uh, you know, I always have schedules even that I've worked on, but sometimes it's not as simple to get the business to do that because there's so much options that people have. Uh, but uh, we're breaking ground in Africa as far as tourism. So, it's a little more unique and it's a little more just life changing and, and you know, not saying, you know, but it's where the, the level of tourism and the level of uh, us connecting and moving around is not really established. So that's what we've been doing and also, you know, encouraging other people and then, you know, whoever don't copy, you know, you, you influence and encouraging. But uh, our goal is to always take, uh, uh, take Africa roots and culture tours to another level. So all the itineraries are uniquely different, uh, but you get the same impact. You know, you come away feeling like this is an incredible journey for lifetime experience. And and as far as our South Africa, um, 
we try to cut back the level of trauma and the level of, uh, you know, but uh, some countries, uh, you know, Ghana, South Africa, you know, that's part of the history and we tie that into the tours that we do. Um, so it's all out there, the trauma and energy, but it's kind of just giving you a balanced experience. And I would never just flood us with this trauma and this uh, struggle, um, you know, so it's, it's balanced out as best as we can. So it's, um, you know, it's a skill we just organize by this using the experience that we have to this create something to where you, know, you get a little bit of just a nice introduction. Uh, so definitely always have to just warn everyone because I've never seen a place like South Africa. It's like two separate worlds. It's like one one minute you're in a world of just riches and great infrastructure. And then a few seconds later, you see in this dire heart poverty and homelessness and you know, and crazy people to where you have to make sure you protect uh, the people that you're traveling with from that's why we never go and bring any groups into a, a market. It's like kind of like just sending people out there just to get, you know, pickpocketed and things like that. I'm not trying to speak negative about this moving around in Africa, but that's the situation that happened. Um, our goal is always going to keep you uh, to keep away from large crowds. And if we ever have to penetrate or move around any large crowds outside of the bus, it's the same thing I'm going to always tell you. T uh, tuck in your phone uh, and all your just uh, valuables um, and make sure you have your stuff tight and things like that. Uh, me and my son had to walk through this crazy traffic of a parade in South Africa in Cape Town. The first thing I would tell him to do is just uh, to make sure he, it, it, you know, it put his uh, iPhone in his front pocket and hold it down. And it's not saying that people are going to pickpocket with you, but you're moving in a large crowd. It may be 99% of people that are just great, honorable people, but there's this 1% of the, that just out there to this take advantage of a situation and, you know, we look flashy and we look this different. So you can just, you know, we just stand out and it's hard not to just stand out. Even if you just dress simple, you just look different and things like that. So that's our goal. And the reason why we got in that movement, because, you know, we had to cross a parade and then we have to get back across the parade. So got caught in the traffic. So those are the things that uh, we do logistically and, you know, make sure that the people who have on security tour guides. Um, so, I always want to make sure we have your best uh, safety in it because the first thing people are going to say, well, this country uh, is dangerous. This country had a civil war. This country is dangerous. This country just goes on. And the same thing I'm going to say about New York City, the world's greatest place for tourism. I mean, everybody go to New York. Everybody want to go to New York. They have more flights going there than anywhere else. And um, you have degenerates and crazy folks in Manhattan and places like that. But, you know, it don't stop tourism from going. And, uh, you know, some of the, the world's greatest scammers uh, so, uh, you know, that's why we mentioned the fact of how we make our movements to be clear with everyone. So that's uh, South Africa. And uh, the following year, you know, we set off to Senegal and the Gambia, uh, looking to get rid of that tour. Unfortunately, I have no interest. Uh, no one has shown any interest, so I'm not taking it personal. But I felt like we put our heart out into the 2021 20, and 2023 journey and shared a whole lot of documentation and put it out. But, it, you know, it goes like that. So... Hopefully, you know, I get lucky to work out um, somewhere like, you know, Kenya and Ethiopia, which are two incredible countries that I've only been to once and never been able to get back uh, there. And I always thought that they were a great presentation I could work out because they have two incredible airlines, Ethiopian Airlines and Kenya Airways, which can get you around because that's one of the most important thing about these logistic movements. You want to make sure you get you on incredible airlines. That's make sure your baggage flow goes good and you don't have to worry about a bunch of drama. Uh, so that's what we have planned for 2025. And, you know, Ghana, that's our 25th journey of a lifetime. And my goal is to look, literally show people our proud progress on Black Star Pan-African community. So that's uh, the 25th journey. And that's a lot of pressure, but that is a, a direct goal. And we're going to close out the year with our Brazil Roots and Culture Tour in November 21st to December 1st. So a little shorter schedule, but at the same time, too, that's what we have to do because we have so much other things we need to do, especially building the Black Star Pan-African community and working with our partners in other countries. So Brazil is going to be another exceptional journey. Um, that was uh, last time we did that journey was July of 2017. And and that's when we moved to this uh, location as far as this Africa for the African. This is a beautiful uh, location to run business uh, right here in uh, Georgia, um, so perfect location set up to this, be able to just operate. And then think about that expansion in uh, Jihad in the Black Star Pan-African community. So that's the link for the Black Star Pan-African community for those who are interested. 
And then once you uh, go down the um, site, that's when you're going to see all of the social links, the video links. So definitely recommend you check out the videos, check out the social pages, make some comments, share some information. And then this is the vibrant um, picture I was telling you about South Africa, December 2023. So, um, and that just takes you the opposite uh, direction all the way down. And then uh, from the newsletter, when you scroll down, you'll see the full scope of our group photos. So family, let me uh, stop there and open things back up, uh, see if anybody have any questions and the other page that I wanted to click on as time is going along. And I do some of this page and then open things up. All right, so we're looking for, in the website, we're looking for Liberia. And then we're going to go to departure and reminder list. And so that is that is one of the lists uh, that we have on every single tour package. And I'm going to just go through the general information and then as map, and then we're just going to open things up for questions. But uh, it starts off with uh, one, may, letting you know that um, uh, the link for all of the information that you need traveling is right there on our site and it gives you all the details you need to process to itinerary overview, general terms, uh, itinerary and, and this uh, preparation list. Number two talks about uh, gratuities for all tour participant that goes towards uh, all of the people that um, basically accommodate us uh, throughout the journey. Uh, three, uh, definitely a very important note. Uh, when you visit, do not come with a romanticized notion about Liberia slash Africa or or you will be disappointed and unnecessarily frustrated. And this go back, goes back to what I was talking about at the business conference. Uh, so we're also telling people, come with an open mind and be open to knowing about the country, knowing about that Liberia is a developing nation and in other parts of Africa, the same thing to developing nation. And we can uh, be you know, part of the future, but uh, you know, definitely want to make sure that we don't get ourselves connected to the wrong energy of people and definitely... Uh, romanticize that uh, we're coming somewhere where we can just feel like we could just do what we want. Uh, number four talks about all of the airlines e-tickets. So the goal is always to uh, get tickets um, the latest um, two, three months. Um, and when we can do it earlier, the goal is always to do it earlier. Uh, uh, so the e-tickets, uh, once it's sent to you in that time frame, um, it's just a simple thing. Um, you go to the uh, website of the airline and you put in your confirmation number and your name. And then your ticket information will come up. And it's one of the things we always tell everyone, make sure you, uh, when I send the information to you, because I usually get like a 24-hour window from the airlines or if I'm using a, a booking company uh, uh, where I'm just limited to using the airline. But for the most part, we use uh, the airline. So example, Delta, once you do the tickets, uh, they usually give you a window of where if there's any mistake, it's easily corrected. Uh, can they still correct it? It's not a problem. It's just... It's a little simpler within the 24 hour window. And if we need to just cancel and redo something else, then that's also simple. Uh, but once you have your ticket, make sure you print it out, make sure you look clearly and make sure the dates all match up to the flow of the schedule on the itinerary uh, from the tour that you're committed to. And uh, it's one of those things where uh, you're responsible for the information. So make sure that you keep up with your own booking. And if anything change, you know, uh, we're always gonna keep you posted because we're all, for the most part, all of us are always going to be on the same flight or have the same flight sequence. Uh, so, you know, and then we do preparation. We usually do preparations anywhere from uh, two to three weeks. We just get on a call and we'll go over everything, make sure all the information is clear, make sure everybody is up to date and things like that. So take, you know, take the responsibility to just make sure you just check the airline website. If you want to add your seat, change your seat, make sure you do that. If you want to add special meals, you can. And a situation where you can't, then uh, you know, let me know and then we can work those things out. Uh, five and six, uh, make sure you print and verify and have all your documents organized. And if I show you what I have right here, you know, but it's based on us moving around like that. I'll just have everything well organized and printed out. And uh, it's been there for about three months now. With you know, That's waiting for me to take it and go to Liberia. But that's one of the first things that is get out the way. Make sure all those things are clear and and done. Uh, so for those of us that's getting ready to go to um, you know, Ghana, uh, Liberia and uh, South Africa, the same thing too. This uh, 
Let's make sure that uh, we're prepared, make sure we're clean, clear, make sure that we know what's going on and um, make sure don't just um, wait for me to call you to tell you to check your tickets because that's, um, yeah, you know, we have a lot of calls to make and want to limit having to just keep on following up with people. But we definitely want to make sure you're good because uh, you don't want any mistakes to where we have phone calls coming our way and then we're, you know, we're trying to get through security and we're trying to put our bags up. That's why everything has to be clear. Everything has to be organized ahead of time. And uh, that's why commitments, all those things are important. So we know if we need to move forward on a journey or cancel it or change things around. Uh, so I'm always here to, available to communicate. So you can always text, email, or call me um, no matter what I'm doing. Um, you know, if I have busy schedule appointments, um, I'm going to always just take time out to look at who is communicate with me and those who are traveling with me and, you know, are always a, a priority because that's um, one of the things you just want to make sure people get direct answers back immediately and make sure they're clear immediately. All right, so, so some of the other things uh, moving forward. Uh, number seven, I always recommend that uh, we just arrive no later than two, three hours or we can just bump it up to three, four hours ahead of time. Uh, just give yourself just enough time to just you know, take your time and just go through all the things you need to go through, security and, you know, get there, relax a little bit and then meet up, uh, associate with the people that are there early and just kind of just wait for the rest of us and just make sure you're clear. Uh, eight and nine, uh, we talk about uh, baggage. So for this one is on Royal Air Morocco and then we have um, domestic flights on airlines like Delta, JetBlue and uh, United. But regardless of the situation, now uh, once you log into your ticket, make sure you're clear on baggage. Make sure you know if you're doing a domestic flight, sometimes there's fees to check your bags. If the flight is connected to an international flight, then uh, usually it's not. Uh, so all those things uh, need to be clear. Uh, ten now uh, when packing uh, uh luggage, remember less is uh, better. So for those who want to bring school supplies or bring anything to give to the country. That's a good way to reduce your, you know, if you brought one bag with things that you want to get rid of, once you get rid of those things, then now you have another 50 pound bag where you can fill up uh, or you can also pay for an extra bag. So family, I'm going to stop right there on 10 and open things back up and see if I uh, lost uh, anybody. So family, uh, we have talked about uh, the uh, different uh, schedules that we have uh, for this year, next year, trying to see if anybody have any questions. And also we've talked about some of the preparation, the first 10 uh, things in the preparation. So I just wonder if anybody have any questions or anybody have anything they'd like to share before we continue. All right, everybody quiet tonight. Uh, Kubi, I see that your line is open. Is that really you? Are you up? All right. So let me uh, proceed. And again, all of these uh, things that I have on the preparation list is relevant to every single last country that we are traveling to. This is uh, general details using the Liberia preparation list to just talk about these things. All right, uh, 11, I um, always recommend everyone bring a set of red, black, and green uh, gold colors. Uh, and also, always recommend that bring a set of whites. And that's more for uh, reconnection, cultural um programs and also for Pan-African programs as far as city tours and uh, and things like that. So, uh, and then uh, for the most part, the t-shirts that we produce usually are a combination or a high combination of uh, red, black, and red, black, green, and gold. Uh, 12, uh, any supplies you want to donate this, uh, bring on and uh, we'll share with uh, one of the schools that we have on the uh, tour or one or two depends on uh, the tour that we're traveling on. Uh, on 13, what I always have, have on 13 is our meetup time. So this is just a meetup time that's always remembering everyone. This is our meetup time for our library tour. And uh, for everyone to be there March 29th. And this is the meetup time at 7 o'clock where all of us meet up right by where the flight is. And then we just connect, introduce uh, ourselves to each other. And some of us will know each other already. If you get on the, the private group call where we do introductions and also where we share photos, of uh, each other and then do introductions and um, things like that just um, a little earlier and it's just our style of just, um, you know, communicating and connecting. That way 
Yeah. When you get to the country, when you get somewhere, you're not that new to each other as a people. Uh, so, and then some people have traveled uh, before. So it's a, it's a situation that uh, gets a little uh, easier. Uh, so looking forward to meeting up with everyone uh, there for that journey uh, and uh, make sure that uh, we, we sh all sh we're all set to get there early. So the goal is to make sure that uh, we work out our uh, situations as far as seats and work out anything uh, way ahead of time. And that way we can just be all set. And then next time, uh, next time, uh, you know, we all together is uh, going to be in Casablanca and then uh, Liberia. Uh, 14, uh, any necessary medicine, just bring what you need. Just make sure you're prepared. Save yourself a trip to the pharmacy. Uh, save yourself to shop right, to buy uh, beach towels and any little things that you need. Uh, 15, uh, cameras, camcorders, uh, phones. Um, if you want to use the local phone system, bring an unlocked phone. If not, then just buy a phone from the uh, the country and it would already be unlocked and you just have to pay for the minutes there. And then you'll be able to have a direct number and you'll be able to also use your Wi-Fi network on there. But beyond that, um, just uh, bring your US phone and just connect to uh, connect to the Wi-Fi network there, uh, whether at the hotel and uh, or bring a hotspot or buy a hotspot and then use your WhatsApp. Uh, but as far as this, uh, extras, make sure you bring you know, extra you know, memory card or just uh, make sure you have your 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 foreign adapters and um, your, your converters. But the situation in some countries is different. Um, Liberia may be similar to America, but at the same time, too, you know, you leave from Liberia and then you end up in Morocco and then it's a little bit different. So that's why I always just recommend um, you know, converters and foreign adapters and an extension cord. So together, uh, you can just have your little hub right there and you can just plug in all your devices um, and you know, you're good to go. And the main thing is uh, the adapter. The adapter is what's going to fit directly into the wall socket. So it's an adapter that no matter what the wall socket look like, when you have a universal adapter, it's going to fit in there. I have a few of these uh, international um, uh, adapters and I've, I'm yet to travel to a country that it doesn't work or airport or anywhere that doesn't work. So... Once you get one of those, you're good. And once you plug in, then you can plug in your, you know, your universal extension cord, and then you can plug in local or international devices in there. Most devices nowadays, um, your phone, your laptop, um, maybe a shaver, is gonna say 110 to 220 volt, so you'll be able to use it in any system to where it will convert back and forth. So, it, you know, it's not gonna blow when you plug it up. So just um sharing that with everyone. Uh, to make sure that you know we're prepared. Sixteen, a travel al uh, travel iron alarm clock, plastic bags, compact uh, compact umbrella, waterproof poncho, and other convenient accessories. So these are those things that uh, when we get when we give you one of those Africa for Africans bag, you can put your waterproof poncho in there, and you know, and maybe your your, your mini um, mini umbrella, and you know you have it with you at all the time, so you know you're prepared. So that's what that is. And travel iron, maybe your stuff got real crushed up. And uh, maybe the hotel is telling you a certain story. Usually, most hotels you can drop it off to you know iron it for a charge, or they drop off iron to you if there's not an iron in there already. But beyond that, you know you have your tra travel iron. It's just you know it's one of those things where it just give you flexibility. You pop it out, plug it up, and just get busy. Uh, Seventeen uh, for the mosquito ridden countries. Uh, Definitely recommend uh, mosquito spray or repellent or centronella oil, which is an excellent insect repellent. And avoid wearing scented lotions or oil uh, oils. Mosquitoes like uh, sweet scents, uh, so make sure um, you know you put something as neutral as possible. And some of these things have dangerous chemicals, so make sure that you're clear about what you bring in, and uh, make sure you're good. So those are some of the recommendations. And 18 um, calculator, you can use your phone. Uh, basic things like currency exchange and library exchange. Last I checked for one US dollars, it was 193 Liberian dollar. So that's uh, what I remember. I think yesterday I changed that. Uh, 19, uh, bring as much uh, cash as you think you may need. Um, so this is just a range. Um, you know, some people are coming to uh, be shop uh, sh shopaholics uh, and some people are coming just to be mild. So it's all up to you. Bring you know, bring big U.S. bills to get your best exchange rate, and then also if you need to use a Visa um, or just any cards, uh, make sure we get you into the aspect of um, the tourist district where they always have 
more ATMs in uh, other locations. So you can do that also. So whichever way you want to use that, uh, that's absolutely fine. And always recommend everyone make sure that they reach out to their bank or put a travel note on their card. Um, it's some banks may require for you to, once you use it, then they'll send you a text message. And as long as you clear that text message, you'll be able to do what you need to do or or log back in and can you know confirm it was you. But regardless of the situation, just want to let everyone know. And then if the card gets blocked, it's not the end of the world. Those things happen to people like myself all the time. Um, and that's why I'm always here to tell stories about all these things and how to be prepared because, you know, but it's never the worst situation because you always have a bunch of backup plans, uh, just one card and it's one situation. Cards do get sucked in AT machines also, unfortunately. Uh, that has happened. Not trying to scare anyone. So make sure you, you know, work those things out and uh, so on. So that's why people like myself, like PayPal and like um, the corporate banks, and you have those different leverage of move, move things around and make things happen, regardless of a card is gone. And then you have a situation where you have uh, digital cards now on your phone that you can use and scan and things like that. And then you have, you know, what uh, Kyla will always talk about, which is always one of the best things about being in West Africa is mobile money, where, you know, you know, where you just use your send wave to send someone a payment and things like that. So those are the flexibility of things we explained. But uh, if your phone, if your account does get locked, uh, what you have to do is just uh, call the bank and then just explain that it's you and not someone else and just do your verification and you're good to go. But uh, the better you can work those things ahead of time from leaving, the better it is. Uh, 20, you know, you know, that's all we only go to is tropical countries except for South Africa, where, it's, you, know, where you don't know if you're going to be in Johannesburg or Cape Town and it's cold. Which last time, both last two times, the weather was different. This time it was rainy and a little cold in Johannesburg. And last time it was hot. And in Cape Town this time it was hot and last time it was cold. And that's from going uh, in December 2023 20, and also November 2019. But for the rest of the countries, uh, which is based in uh, East, West and Northern Africa, uh, you're looking at uh, nice hot weather in your mid 80s. So just enjoy the niceness. And uh, wherever you're going, you're going to have your air-conditioned bus and you're going to have your air-conditioned. So you have your luxury to feel good, but the, the countries are hot. So, you know, the ones that we have beaches to, we just make sure, you know, it should be a little cooler. Like Liberia, I would think, will be a little cooler because we're, all of the resorts that we have are on the coast and only two hotels that we stay in, only one hotel that we stay in in the country uh, or in the city, which is which is for two days. So make sure that, uh, you know, you're prepared, especially if you come into library, you know, you have lots of beautiful resorts, uh, swim, swim, enjoy your swimming, enjoy your, this tropical niceness. So make sure you dress for all the different occasions, uh, for beach, for nightlife, shopping, networking, for business and investment conference, for the social gathering and things like that. Uh, 21, just be mindful of photos um, in this airports and state building. I'm not telling you not to take anything or do anything, but definitely just keep it down. And then we're definitely going to recommend on our tour guide to give us a heads up or what not to take photos and videos of, which we usually do in every country. So hopefully we can get them on alert because uh, anything happened, we're going to blame them. We're going to say, well, you didn't tell us, so it's your fault. Uh, but uh, it's uh, one of those situations that um, you know I've been asked to come over here. Let me see a camera and... And so, you know, so they, so whoever can delete whatever, I was like, go ahead and delete what you need. It's, and, and you know, it's what it is. Uh, or someone say, I, you took a, a photo of me. And I was like, no, I was my, I was aiming my camera uh, at a different angle. And I was like, you can come right here and see. I mean, and this would be like a security person at an airport or somewhere where if they don't mind you taking something, they just don't want you to record them or take anything off them. So, you know, you show them you're good. But uh, these are things, you know, you just want everyone to keep away from to just have less drama. I'm a little more bold where, you know, where I'm, but sometimes not being bold, you know, I'm, I'm there documenting our experience and sometimes you're recording things and, you know, but definitely want us to be mindful of certain things and whatever the situation is, just be peaceful with whoever we have to work it out with. And then, uh, you know, once we finish uh, this, um, you know, Wayne and Kala can also just share some of their experience and some of their recommendations and things uh, beyond what I'm sharing also. Uh, what I'm sharing is uh, always directly general for the most part in this uh, general experience traveling around the world. All right, uh, so next uh, one is uh, 22. So one of the things I always recommend is travel insurance. So travel insurance, that's your link right there to travel insurance to cover your flight, to cover your tour package, things like that. Uh, each travel package is, is different what you purchase, but this is Alliance. That's uh, one of the companies that uh, we've used over the years. 
uh, 23, toiletries, including uh, tissues, um, napkins, wet wipe, face, uh, facial tissues, washcloth, beach towel, laundry soap. So these are the things that we literally always explaining to you that ultimately that you should definitely make sure that you bring and make sure you have in place. All right, uh, 24. Um, and I need to fix that. Uh, note that uh, people in the different countries that we travel to are just, you know, you're going to meet a lot of friendly people, but uh, we just want to make sure that, however, be wary of people that you that just want to make quick money from you and want to promise things that they can't keep. So you should know as much as possible about the people that uh, you're planning to do business with. So that is one of our greatest recommendations. 25, uh, we have places uh, where we travel, where we're not always in the main city, where we're out in the middle of just paradise. And doing in the middle of paradise, you don't have a bunch of, uh, you may have limited options. So one of the things that we have, we're just in, in general time, especially if a few people want to organize in the lobby or wherever, and play cards, uh, dominoes, board games. So those are things that uh, we usually just recommend. Uh, 26, emergency uh, items. Flashlight, basic uh, first aid kits, and a few other things um, that I have on the list that uh, may be, you know, it's just based on your health situation. I don't want to tell you that this is what you should bring and this is what you should have. We we'll definitely want to make sure that, uh, you know, that you have an idea of this, looking at this as a list to just have an idea of what to get ready for. Uh, 27, um, my most important note, Please focus on enjoying yourself and accomplishing your mission. Do not get distracted by others or get caught up in complaining. This is an experience that will have its ups and downs. It's a part of your introduction to Liberia slash Africa. We recommend that you go with the flow and enjoy your time in paradise around this wonderful itinerary that we are put together on the journey of a lifetime. Uh, so definitely want us to just be focused and just enjoy our paradise. Uh, it's, we all have different personalities and we all from different places and things like that. And uh, we all have uh, different expectations of what we're looking to do and get into and things like that. So I want to make sure everyone is uh, good. Uh, 28, um, there's no mandatory anything that we have on the list. Uh, anyone wants to get anything for themselves is fine. In some of the, um, the West African countries, uh, maybe they're recommending uh, yellow fever and so on. But all those things is all up to the individuals. Um, I'm not going to put myself in a situation where I tell people to get anything any vaccination and it's their situation. But uh, anything that's mandatory, if you ever want to call me and uh, find out, I can always let you know this is mandatory and you have to have it, which I would do now. So nothing is mandatory, meaning that if you don't show up in a country and you don't have it, they're going to return you back to the country. For me, that's the definition of mandatory. So uh, on that note, you know, you can kind of figure out what I'm saying. This uh, uh, You travel with me also, so I'm not going to let any of our tour members get returned. Uh, that that would never happen now. It's a simple communication situation. So part of uh, when you're reading information as far as the uh, visa requirements or information for the country, make sure you read clear if something is mandatory or not. Uh, but if you have a chance to get a yellow fever card, I would always recommend getting certain cards. Um, like myself, I traveled with my COVID card and yellow fever card. And that was especially during the last few years. Uh, so that was always simple for myself. Uh, but I'm not going to sanction someone paying 500 to to $1,000 to get a card or things like that. Uh, but so if you need something, let us know and uh, we'll find the best doctors around that can get you a uh, yellow fever or, or see what kind of recommendations is out there. Uh, because you do have natural practitioners that can give you a certain vaccination that it doesn't require a vaccination. So just putting all that out in general, just to just make sure everybody's clear that way no one is scared and no one feel like they're limited. And if nothing else, like everything else, you can always call, text me, and I'll communicate back with you immediately, and we can just have full clarity. 29, um, this is just for baggage information. So I always want, once you get to the country, just get a card, put your baggage together, and then stay in the same area where we all are, and then make sure that we all have our bags, and whoever don't get their bags because of unfortunate situation, we'll make sure that uh, they are directed to the right place to fill out uh, the baggage situation. Does it, has it happened before? Absolutely, things happen, especially... When you're in a busy holiday and you got airports frozen and they, and in their warehouse or you know in the airport they got luggage from all over the place you know? and so yes uh to myself other people but uh, the better we can get to airports ahead of time the better we can have a sequence like right now we don't have any busy time so this is mainly always important for those who are traveling in December uh, we always make sure we have our game plan organized November is not bad and other months are not bad 
Uh, but at any moment, you know, if you have a situation where you have storms, you have dangerous situations, those things can happen. Uh, so always recommend that with your carry-on bags that you definitely carry at least one or two days of clothing with you and um, yeah, and things like that, not to scare anyone, but um, we all have to prepare for these things. And, and you travel like myself for so long to so many different places. You know, these things happen. And the fortunate thing of it is, is like you have one or two situations that only have happened once. So, and then, you know, when you look at the situation, it was the weather, it was chaos or whatever was going on and things like that. Um, so for the most part, those things don't happen, but um, you know, I still have to recommend that you be prepared for any situations to where you, you know, you, your luggage, you know, because I don't, I don't want you to get to a country and then all your stuff is in your check bags and next thing you know, not have certain things. So we always work that out because then we could definitely take you to shop right at one of the places to get what you need. Uh, so that's one of the situations. All right. So proceeding uh, past that, uh, just um, make sure that um, you keep an eye on your things every step of the way. That way you know it. And then, uh, you know, if you want to put uh, GPS uh, tags in your bag to keep up with your bags, that's always an ingenious idea. Uh, but at the same time, to the, um, the airport, you know, you can track your bags on your airport login. Uh, 13, uh, the final thing, uh, bring uh, things that uh, will keep you, uh, that, They'll make your journey a special moment. So if you want to bring a certain like ancestor's ashes or if you want to bring a picture of an ancestor or anything you want to do, whether we had an African Holocaust uh, dungeon or whether we have a place of a historical and ancestral just, uh, return, uh, it's all up to you. So those are the things that we share. And family, on that note, let me stop and see um, if anyone is available for any questions before we close out. Or if uh, Wendy, if you and uh, Kala want to share any preparations of your own about Liberia and about this traveling and things like that. Yeah, uh, what you said about the uh, mosquitoes, but Liberia, I've never experienced, to be honest with you, I've never been bitten by a mosquito in Liberia. Strange, you know, maybe because we're on the coast and we I haven't went up country before, you know. And so uh, no coats, uh, no uh, bugs, no roaches, no rats. Strange, just a strange situation, man. I don't, I don't get it. I was prepared for the worst, but with my mosquitoes, I didn't bring it this time, you know. Uh, so, so I might pick up someone I'm there. I doubt if I'll need it, you know. But you know, people want to have it. That's always a good thing to read, make you feel better, you know. But I used to spray it every day, but you know, I never experienced any mosquitoes or flies when I was over there. You know, and everything like that. So, you know, maybe because, like I said, I was mostly in Marmovia and everything like that. Maybe the flies just don't can't survive there. You know, you know, it's a rough place. You know, the flies can't survive there. But uh, yeah, so just be prepared. And uh, like Bomani was saying, you know, you know, uh, you know, uh, there's people is going to come to you and tell you that they own ten thousand acres of land, and you're gonna do this and uh one lady was saying on youtube in ghana she was like stop letting them rename you and all this stuff like this you know it's all about control you know the whole everything like that this let's 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 start being like i said early in the show in this in this not show but this podcast right i said if i could do nothing else so i want us to start sounding like we're the intelligent people we are in africa you know somehow it seemed like we go to africa we just lose our common sense you know, we lose our common sense. So we act common sense and uh, and just act the way we act, we're supposed to act and everything. Things will work out. But when you start thinking that you're going to be so, go from being, uh, and I'm not trying to be disrespectful, if you think you're just an ordinary person in America and somehow you go to Africa, suddenly you're a king and queen and all stuff like that. You're just setting yourself up to be a fool and then, uh, and being taken advantage of and heartbroken. And then you come back to America, with, oh, man, forget Africa and whatnot. You no, know, you went over there under the wrong reasons, you know? And now you, you the, Ghana got opportunity. All these countries in Africa got opportunity. Stick with the opportunity and everything like that and just go there for a peace of mind. But if you go over there thinking Africa's going to solve your problems, uh, you you know, solve your problems, I, I, I don't know what to tell you. You know, whatever problems you have in America, it's going to make it even worse. If you're strong in America, 
you know, then you're going to be really strong in Africa too. That's just the way it is. So I just want to put that out there, you know. Yes, Kyle, I appreciate your brother. Uh, and that's all we're doing because uh, we don't want uh, people to say, well, you guys have been traveling all over Africa and y'all didn't tell us that all these things go on and things like that. You know, I was like, yeah, we're going to talk about tourism, but we're going to sh share the real life because we want to make sure everybody's in good focus and in good hands and people are clear that the things we're talking about does happen. So for them not to just make any, you know, any kind of moves. So my sister, Wayne, um, are you up? Um, you got a few more minutes before we close. And also, Akuvia, are you up? And anyone else? Uh, just trying to get um, feedback or trying to get response from different people. But uh, Wayne, go ahead. I'm sure you got something good to share with us as far as our preparation. And while we're waiting for Wayne, uh, let me just look for our YouTube page. All right, so Wendy, whenever you're ready, just uh, unmute and uh, we got you. And then anyone else have any questions on the thing that we, the things that we talk about as far as our preparation and as far, where is this thing not? There we go. As far as our preparation uh, with the uh, 30 points, which is on all of the uh, tour information, uh, which is uh, valuable information because when you're thinking about being prepared, being ready, uh, by the time you go through all those things, it's either going to prepare you or remind you of uh, what you need to do. So it's one of the things I always recommend everyone to take a look at and uh, be clear on it. All right, so Wayne, we're still uh, waiting for you and um, for anyone else that's looking to uh, that's looking to share information, have any questions, um, please go ahead. So family, this is our website, um, uh, YouTube uh, video, I guess, presentation. Uh, so our YouTube channel, uh, Bomani2007, uh, that's the uh, link. Uh, and then as soon as you get to the uh, YouTube uh, page, uh, give you a good introduction. And so you can click on click on videos and you'll see uh, the 4,000 plus videos, or you can click on playlists. Um, and or you can just uh, stay on the homepage and uh, stroll all the way down. So you'll see the last of the videos uh, and there's some random videos that YouTube put together. But the main thing on the page is the uh, multiple playlists. So these are the last of the journeys that we have traveled with. And as time go along, I add more videos because I'm a video taking person because it's one of those things you never take your experience in Africa for granted because I still think about con con countries like uh, Kenya and Ethiopia. You know, I wish you could have did more and record more and things like that. Uh, so uh, this is a definitely uh, up from uh, our last um, South Africa journey. Lots of this incredible uh, presentation of the country and this uh, sharing our experience. Uh, Tanzania, same thing too. Got more videos to upload and uh, finished uploading the last set of uh, Ghana videos for uh, May, June. That's 190 videos. And it's just from the introduction to this different segments of it. It's just kind of like nowadays they have these series and they show you just a full scope of a program. And this is what it is, our full experience. Uh, so uh, you can always just uh, take a look at the clips of your interest, especially if it's based on whatever parts of the journey that has you more interest. Uh, beyond that, we just shown highlights along the entire way. And then this Liberia prep, uh, preparation is just uh, all of the conference calls uh, that we have had for Liberia and the live streams and presentations. Uh, it's all there in this. Uh, and you know, the next one we do is just with the actual videos with us in the country. Uh, Selling on and the Gambia, um, our first journey our last year. And then scroll down and see more journeys and then for those interested in the Black Star Pan African community, this is just years of just us going from this a jungle or just nothing uh, to this building up, you know, civilization little by little. And every time I go by, there's just more and more people building homes. Uh, so uh, it's a part of just hanging in there, fighting and just figuring it out um, and understanding that, you know, everything don't get done this, uh, right this moment. You have to just work out things for the future and just, you know, get it done. So that's, you know, whenever I look at that, I just see in the long way we have came in and I look to see that we're closer towards the end of the tunnel than anything else. So it's, uh, I don't have to tell people other than um, if you're looking to do anything in Africa, be prepared for that journey, but be prepared to fight and hang in there um, and be prepared to work with your own brothers and sisters to guide you and help you. 
uh, some of the earlier journeys uh, to Ghana, and then these are some of the earlier journeys uh, to uh, South Africa. That's Brazil. That's Ethiopia. Uh, this one is um, Egypt, 2004. This one is some classic uh, photo and video slideshow. Um, you know, some I've, I've created with uh, my you know, new AI technology as far as uh, someone speaking or reading off uh, you know, information. Uh, so great uh, video presentation. Let's lots of uh, highlights of tour group photos. And this is um, all of our conference calls. So every time we have conference calls, uh, regardless of whatever kind of conference calls or interviews you do, it's all on this playlist. So once you click on any of the playlists, it opens up to where you just see a multitude of history of information. And more playlists and more playlists. And this is my good brother, me and Color Genesis show where we just have, a you know, where this is like intense. You know, I mean, this is on another level. So it's not always for everyone, but uh, we have long conversation and detail but it's always this um you know we try to just get ourselves um to, to just connect with our people in different ways and uh sometimes you just have to create subject that's gonna just you know frustrate people and to see what their feedback is so yes family and the other one is uh the uh facebook so as soon as you get on facebook and you click on photos and you click on albums, you have a whole lot of albums there. And a whole lot of albums. And uh, what my goal is always is to keep that, keep building on them to where you can click on them and just, uh, you can just see the flow of how we move. You can see how we dress, how we move. You can just kind of get an idea of who you're traveling, who you're dealing with, what, you, what we're doing. Because, you know, you always want to make sure you present yourself so people can just, you know, see who you are. And then, you know, it's up to them to connect with you. But, uh, we just showing every aspect of our life, our movements, and our business. Usually, most of the pictures you see is just me and my son, and we're at the airport, and those are the first set of pictures. Sometimes he's smiling, he's happy. Sometimes he's have different, you know, you know, because he probably tired of all these pictures getting snapped off him and things like that. But that's that's what we do. We take a lot of photos and we do make a lot of videos. And as you know, I wouldn't be able to believe this myself, you know, unless I see what I look at. Uh, but yeah, that's us in Africa over the, you know. Literally over, you know, almost over a 20-year period. I don't think anything from 2004, 2005 is on here, but I know it goes down to 2006. Uh, let me see. And this was our magical journey in Ethiopia. And I was just there impressed. Uh, Ethiopian experience. Uh, you know, you have these small jets, and, you know, they, have, they just run their own independent airports. And they just, uh, it's just, uh, it's like, all of the different countries you go to, you can see some uniqueness that that if we all pick up different things from each country and you know and and, and, and you know kind of work it that way. You know, all these countries would be just incredible, incredible as far as just being able to compete on a higher level with the world. So once you scroll down, these are our pitches, and that is Mr. Bomani Dakaria telling me grew up in an age and a world where you've been documented and you know, and you know we're showing our experience of us moving and everything. So those are the early stages. And you can see early years, 2006, 2007, 2008. So that's our level of documentation as far as videos and uh, photos. And so let me stop here and see if anybody have any questions before we close out. So family, does have any, anyone have any questions before we close out? Well, I appreciate everyone joining us on this uh, wonderful Sunday. And um, it's, it was a little more longer than we usually go, but uh, looking to get two of our hosts to share their information on our upcoming journey to Liberia. So family, I'll keep everybody posted and we keep in touch and I'm on standby as always if anyone needs to communicate with me. So the journey continues and uh, you take care and enjoy your night. Good night. All right. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Good night. All right. Thank you. Good night. Akubi is still not going to answer me. You're still going to just like sleeping. I just unmuted and don't say nothing. That's <laughs> 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 right, so a family journey continues. Uh, you take care. All right. Bye. -bye. bye.